Proverbs chapter 31, of course, the book of Proverbs was written by Solomon. Mostly, he's the one who either wrote it or said it, and someone wrote it down and said, let's put that in. God, in his wisdom, gave us 31 chapters of a book of wisdom. How many appreciate the book of Proverbs, and you've read it and gleaned from it? So many things that are there. But the last chapter seems to be, have writ, been written by Bathsheba. Bathsheba, his mom, Solomon's mom, had given him these messages, these truths. Bathsheba, of course, was guilty of adultery with, with the Solomon's dad, David. Things didn't start out real good. Matter of fact, their first baby died as an act of, of judgment. But they had another child. His name was Solomon. In this passage of Scripture, it's a.k.a. Lamuel which means belongs to God. By the way, it's a good thing for every mom and dad to remember that your child belongs to God and that none of us have children of our own. It are all have been lent to us by the Lord. The Bible says that children are inheritance of the Lord. But it says these are the words that the mother of Lamuel, a.k.a. Solomon, gave to him as a young man. And maybe these are things that uh, he said to her. He sa she said to him, first of all, he said, don't give your strength to immorality, to strange women. He tells him as a young man, whatever you do, don't be immoral. Don't be a fornicator. Don't be an adulterer. Don't give your strength to women. Number two, he says, his mother tells him, don't be an alcoholic. Don't drink. He said, if you, it is not for princes to drink alcohol. He said, if you're ever going to need alcohol, it'll be for medicinal purposes at the end of life. Today we have morphine, we have IV drips and things of that nature. He said, that's the only good use for alcohol. People say, well, it's not wrong to drink, it's just wrong to get drunk. Let me give you, it'll give you a little lesson, Spanky. If you don't drink, you won't get drunk. If you just avoid it, that would be the best way. That was his suggestion from his mother. He said, don't, don't, don't drink. And then she said, number three, be an advocate for the poor. Be an advocate for those who are underdogs, those who need help. Step up and, and be, go between them and, and, uh, and those who are accusing or hurting them. Step up and help someone who needs help. That was the three words of it, three concepts of advice he gave, his mother gave to Solomon as a young man. Don't be immoral. Don't drink alcohol. And number three, be an advocate for those who are less fortunate. Boy, that's a good thing for all of us to listen to, don't you think? It's good advice from a mother. I'm glad that his mother gave him that. And by the way, I think it's good advice for all of us today. But then in verse number 10, he asks the question, his mother asks a question, and he puts it here in the paper, who can find a virtuous woman, for her price is far above rubies. Let's look, if we can, please, at verse 11. The Bible says, the heart of her husband does safely trust in her, so that he will have no need of spoil. She will do him good all, and not evil all the days of her life. The first two verses that speak about this virtuous woman speaks about her work as a wife. And not every lady will have the chance to be a wife. But the first way that she is virtuous will be in her conduct within her home as a helpmeet. Ladies, the Bible tells some very important things here. If you want to be a good mother, if at all possible, and if God has put you in a situation, I know there are single moms that have been devastated by the complications of sin. And any time we talk about the things of God, and we, God meant it for a husband and one woman to be married for life. That's what he wants. Okay? And he wants those two people to raise children together. Well, sin complicates. Anything God wants, Satan wants to uh, pervert. He wants to change. Every time God has an idea, Satan has a, has a comment, and it's usually an antithesis to that. And that's the case in the home. But I will say this, that one of the best things you can do as a mother is to be a good wife. 
I say to parents, they'll say, I said it by a little couple. They've been married for three years on the airplane going to, uh, to somewhere recently. And they, they told me something here. They said, they said, well, do you have any advice for us? As I gave them a gospel track, began to walk, witness to them. And they told me about they've been married for three years and they love their dogs. Oh, they showed me pictures of their dogs. And they had a little, a little uh, video of their, they had a little, some kind of ring or something, a picture of their dog running around. So one of them is kind of sick. Look at here. And I was like, oh, yeah. You know, and then, but they said, give us advice for our marriage. And for advice if we have children. I said, what the best advice you could have? is to fall deeply in love with God and stay in love with each other. And make a decision you committed. Commit to do two things. Have faith in God and determine to keep working on your marriage. The reason many marriages do not work, there's two reasons. People don't work. A relationship doesn't happen because you want it to happen. It happens because you work at it. There's going to have to be forgiveness. There's going to have to be effort. There's going to have to be energy. There's going to have to be love. It's selfless. But also, it's going to take faith in God. Not faith in your spouse, but faith in the Lord. Continuing to be faithful to the Lord. And determining to stay. And then, keep your heart tender. One of the best marriage verses you can find in the Bible is Ephesians 4, verse 32. And be ye kind. Boy, we need a revival of kindness in our relationships. Be kind one to another. And then, number two, tender-hearted. Jesus said when he was attacked by a tricky, ricky lawyer in the Gospels there, he said, hey, is it okay to divorce whoever we want to and all for this, all the reason? He said, no, for the hardness of your heart, Moses gave you a bill of divorcement. It wasn't God's plan. He said, because your hearts were so hard. And I've seen this happen. I've seen it happen in families. And I've seen where one person has had a soft heart and the other person had a hard heart. And then later on, when the person with the hard heart gets softened by the discipline of, of sin, the complications of sin, the discipline of God, the other person now has a hard heart, and now they can't reconcile. But keep your heart tender. And then forgive one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. These are things. And he said a virtuous woman is first finds her virtue as a wife. And if God has made you a wife and you have a chance to be a wife, here the Bible tells us in verse number, verse number 11, the heart of her husband does safely trust in her. Openness is very important in a relationship. And then it says that he will have no need of spoil. That means he gets all that he needs in that person, in that wife. He doesn't need to spoil any other tense, any other place. That she takes care of him. That's what the Bible's teaching. And of course, men, we can't use that as an excuse for doing anything that's questionable, wrong, or immoral. But he said, he said boy, a, a wife like that, her husband's not looking anywhere else. He, why in the world would he go somewhere else when he has what God has given him in that precious wife? Then the Bible says she will do him good all the days of her life. First away, a virtuous woman is known by her role as a wife. It's not an easy role. You can't do it by yourself. You, can't, you can be a wife by yourself, but you can't be a good wife by yourself. You're going to need the help of the Holy Spirit of God. You're going to need to be spirit-filled to be this particular virtuous woman. The second thing the Bible tells us in this passage of Scripture is not only her role as a wife, but her role as a worker, her work. Let's just read the verses and we'll look at them real quickly if we can, please. Verse number 13. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh how? Her work is willingly. It's a desired work. It's not a have to, but a get to. One of the things the Bible teaches from the beginning to the end is diligence. Hardworking people are a blessing. One of the things I found out coming to this church eight and a half years ago, and things that impress me to this day in unbelievable ways, is the diligence and hard work of the average rank and file member of our church. We just don't have a lot of lazy people. And hardworking people, they add so much blessing to their institution. Lazy people are a dredge and a scourge to society. And ladies, and this, by the way, these attributes are all good for all of us. But she said a virtuous woman will be known in her work as a wife, will also be known in her labor as a worker. She'll get to do it. It's not a have to, it's a get to. I'm blessed to be married to a very hardworking wife and mother. 
I'm blessed to have been the son of a very diligent mother, Janelle Coleman, uh, Wilkerson Coleman. She was just a great mom. I used to think my mom didn't sleep. She used to be up when I went to, when I went to, when I went to sleep, and then she was always up before I woke up. I thought, Mom, do you ever sleep? Sometimes she'd be reading her Bible when, she, when I go to bed, and she'd be reading her Bible when I woke up. I thought, you read your Bible all night, Mom? She was just a hardworking person. Work was not, a, was not a have to, it was a get to. And I am so thankful for that. Well, it's willing work. Look at verse 13, 14. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She, she is willing to provide. She rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and portion to her maiden. She's devoted. She considereth the field and buyeth it. She has some entrepreneur effort to her. She works at things. With the fruit of her hand, she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good and her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the dischief. The Bible says in verse 20, she stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she has reached forth her hands to the needy. Just a quick thought here. The Bible's teaching us that a lady who is virtuous is known in her role as a wife. She's known in her role as a worker. It's a willing work. It's hard work. It's work that blesses others. You'll see her maidens, her household, her husband, her children. Um, she gives up time and effort and energy. She's selfless. It's a beautiful example of a lady. Let's continue on to see what Solomon's mother told him about a virtuous woman. Verse 21, she is not afraid of the snow for her household. She's not afraid to be, a, she's not afraid for these difficult times because all her household are clothed in scarlet. She's made provision and preparation. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. I think it just means that this lady, this virtuous lady, takes care of herself. She doesn't embarrass her family. She dresses in a place, in a way that is modest and beautiful. And obviously there are different venues of life that require different things, but it's beautiful when you find a lady who is, who is, um, is, 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 is taking care of herself on a daily basis, not just whenever it's time to go out, but any time. I think it's something that's a beautiful testimony. So she's, she's, she represents well herself and her dress. And then the Bible tells us in verse number 23, her husband is known at the gates. He sitteth among the elders, elders of the land. He said her husband is taken care of and he's recognized by his accomplishments. And I think even, even the fact that she cares for him. Verse 24, she maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchants. That means she interacts and she works and she's creative and, uh, and, and puts it into trade. Verse 25, strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. You know, I, I saw a little mother this week. She has three little babies. The oldest was maybe five and then three and then one or two. And boy, I just saw her just, just working hard. And I, I said something that someone said to me years ago. Little mama, the days are long, but the years are short. The challenges of that early time. And, and of course, we have had, I didn't think we were ever going to get out of diapers. I'm telling you what, I should have, I should have invested a long time ago in, in huggies and that kind of thing. And, uh, but boy, I just think, well, we're going to never get out of this thing and taking this trash out to the dumpster and, and just can't wait to take it out because it helped the whole house uh, when the thing was taken out. And miserable. But, you know, I think about all those little times and now I look at them in pictures and think, ah, oh, look at that cute little toe head. Look at that little pumpkin head. That was, that was her when she was little. Now she's getting ready to be a mama and I'm happy to see all that. But he said, but it takes work. Takes work. She's known by her role as a wife. She was known by her role as a worker. And then we see that she was known by her words. Look at the next verse, would you please? We need to hasten, but I thank you for following along this morning. Read it out loud with me, if you would please, verse 26. Everyone reading Proverbs 20, 31, verse number 26. Here we go. She openeth her, and her tongue is the law of kindness. One more time. She openeth. The Bible says she's not only known by her role as a wife, as a worker, but she's known by her words. It's important that you learn. When she opened her mouth, uh, it, was with, it was with wisdom and it was with kindness. 
I think girls, young ladies, and of course the Bible reminds us that, that as young men and young ladies, our problem oftentimes is our mouth. But some people, they grow old, but they never grow up. And there's some older ladies who still haven't learned to master their mouth. And a lady who is virtuous will be known not only by her work, but by her words. What she says. You know, all of us need to realize the power of words. Oftentimes, girls, when you don't get what you nag for, you get what you praise for. Children need that. Those of you who are raising boys, mama, there's power in your words. You can say, well, you never, you always, da, da, da. But you can also say, I admire this about you. I catch, catch them doing right. Admire them. Everybody, and especially young men and young ladies, oftentimes they will go to the praise of a, of, of a, of a woman and the praise of a mother and the praise of the words. Ladies, you find that ladies who are more valuable are, are ladies who are very gracious and careful with their words. In her mouth were the words of wisdom and of kindness. Are the words you speak, girls, are they, are they kind? Are they encouraging? Do they drag someone down or do they, do they push somebody up? These are just biblical things, I think, that as we look at Solomon, as he listened to his mother and he put these words on the pages of God's word, he says, you know what? I, I remember these thoughts. A lady is known by a, her role as a wife, as a worker. A virtuous woman is known by her words. And then lastly, she's known by her wisdom. Wisdom. Let's look at the rest of the chapter, and then we'll make a couple, couple comments, and we'll co close today. Thank you for following along. Now we're looking at verse number 27. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. She's not idle. She's busy. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also appraises her. As children get older, they look back. And oftentimes, children do not have the, uh, the maturity to appreciate a mother when they're young. But as they rise up in life, they look back and say, boy, what a good mom I had. What a faithful wife she was. What a sacrificial person. What a hard worker. What a wise woman. What a... A, a speaker that would speak strength into dad and speak strength into us, would say words that would help us and not destroy us. The Bible says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. He said, they'll rise up. Her husband will praise her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excels them all. Favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord recognizes God. That's a wise thing to do. Shall be praised. Would you read verse 31 again with me? Give her the fruit of her hands. You know, everybody is in a process of writing your autobiography. Everybody's writing one. One day the books will be open. The Bible tells us. We're all writing our autobiography, and on the day that we breathe our last breath, we'll sign off on an unedited edition. Can't change it. And one day our works will praise us or we'll have in regret. You know, today, many of us, we can't make a new beginning, but we can make a new ending. We can't fix all the things. You can't go back into yesterday or last year or the mistakes that I've made. No, but I can say today is the first day of the rest of my life, and I'd like to be a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ today. As a lady, once you decide, I'm going to be a sweet wife. I'm going to be a hard worker. I'm going to use my words right, and I'm going to exercise wisdom in what I do. In closing, may I say the wisest thing that anyone can do is to put their faith in Jesus Christ for salvation. You know what one God wants for every mother, every lady, every man? He wants them to go to heaven. He wants them to live eternally with Him. To live eternally with heaven, heaven with God, it's not hard, but you need to understand three things. Number one, we're sinners. We can't save ourselves. On the best day, we still do things, say things, and act in ways that are not right. We need a savior because we're sinners. Sinners deserve to go to hell. If I go into eternity in my own sin, I will go into eternity meeting God with a fair trial with a God who knows everything about me. But God gives us another option. He said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. I was talking to a lady this week. Her name was Carmen. 
And uh, I did not know this. I was in Long Island, New York, was witnessing to people. She was at a laundromat, and I walked up to her. And, and uh, come to find out, uh, she, I, she, I begin to talk to her. She goes, well, I'm, I want to go to heaven. I'm trying to go to heaven. I'm really trying hard. I said, Carmen, you'll never make it that way. Come to find out, I have preached to her mom and dad in Honduras. Our missionary, Brother Sam Hodges, led her mom and dad to Christ. Her stepdad was an alcoholic in Honduras, and he led her to Christ. She goes, she, I was witnessing her. She goes, hold a second. Are you a Baptist? I said, I am. She said, well, I'm a sister at so-and-so church, but you Baptists seem to know the Bible. He said, a Baptist pastor goes to my mom and dad and says, they love him to death. I said, is his, and what's her name? She said, well, his wife's name is Julie. I don't know his name. I said, is it Sam? She says, yeah. Is it Hodges? Yeah. I said, I've been to your church. I know where your church is. I know your mom and dad. I've been there in the same church. And I began telling Carmen about the Lord. She said, she said Pastor, I need to be saved. But I, but I feel like I've got to earn it myself. Boy, that, I felt so grieved. The secret of eternal life is it cannot be earned. It's, it's a gift. If you try to earn eternal life, you'll never earn it. You need to believe it and receive it. God did all that was needed to be done on the cross when he sent his son to die for our sins. And the wisest person you could be today would be able to give God your sin and accept God's son.